everybody do e world crisscross and wires and uh we back out here today just gonna do a little riding around man gotta love this e-bike stuff guys gotta love it it's a whole new frontier you know, we are pioneering the next uh, the next phase of bikes, e-bikes, and uh, man, it's a beautiful thing. Not only that, the reason why I love e-bikes so much is because it is utilizing electrical components and that makes it great for me because uh, just knowing a little bit of something about electronics gives me an added edge and a feel that I just basically just started <laughs> but the beautiful thing about electronics and if that's if you do some uh, some homework and research, the electronics is all math, guys. It's all math at the end of the day. I like petrol bikes, petrol cars, and all that. There are things that can be calculated, and you don't even have to do these things. In reality, but you can calculate, make these calculations, and pretty much know what the outcome is going to be. Excuse me, I got the sniffles. But uh, yeah, Ohm's law. If you know Ohm's law, that's the basic, one of the basic uh, formulas you need to know for electronics. But uh, let's just say, for example, you wanted to know how much current is going in the circuit. You know, a simple series circuit. Uh-oh. <laughs> Sorry about that. Let's say this circuit was uh, a 12-volt circuit with a 10-amp load that 10 amp, I mean a uh, 10 ohm load 10 ohm load that load can be anything motor uh, you know uh, light bulb uh, any type of resistance load and it's 10 ohms you can calculate how much current is flowing in that circuit just with that information alone 12 volts divided by 10 ohms, it's gonna give you 1.2 amps. 1.2 amps of current flow. And uh, just like with any other equation, you can flip the variables around and figure out the unknown. If you didn't know uh, the resistance and you had the volts and the amps, you could figure out the resistance of the load by taking the voltage and dividing it by the current that'll give you the resistance uh, if you wanted to know how much voltage was on that particular load and you knew the ohms which we said was 10 ohms and it was 1.2 amps flowing through it you know that uh, the voltage drop on that load with just with those numbers so it's great anyway enough of that uh, I see all that to say stuff like speed power torque all those things can be calculated and that's why knowing uh, that 
if I can make all those variables accurate in this statement or in an equation that uh, I'm going to get exactly what the calculation calls for. Just like this bike, uh, I'm trying to reach a certain RPM and I know at a certain amount of voltage and a certain amount of amps and a certain amount of field weakening which is another variable to add it into the equation which makes it more difficult but uh, man like I said you can calculate everything I can pretty much figure out how you know how fast I'll be I'll be going or how much current and voltage it'll take to get me to that speed <laughs> so anyway uh, I determined that even with my battery when you're creating over 30 kilowatts it takes a considerable amount of amps to uh, create that power and I mean over 450 amps is a lot of amps so you're going to get a voltage drop on the battery unless you have enough capacity to keep that voltage up now even though uh, my battery is 14p I still was getting some voltage drop so recently I uh, in order to cure that problem and you know supply this controller with the proper amount of voltage at the proper amount of amps I need to add another two to four P to this bike so that's exactly what I'm doing so I've ordered uh, another 45 mile of cells five extra but I only need 40 to add another 20s2p to the pack that's on this bike and uh, that will give me enough battery capacity that when I pull 450 amps my voltage will stay high enough that I can reach the desired RPM that I'm trying to achieve so actually the calculations and uh, figures that we came up with is overkill more than what's required because I just don't want to barely make it I want to make it you know with room to breathe you know extra I just don't want to make it exact whereas though everything has to be to a T I've, I've, uh, I'm adding that extra 2P along with even a uh, 4P pack that I can add on for insurance to make sure that even if I deplete my battery, you know, because I've been riding or whatever and it's not up to its full voltage, even with a 70% battery, that I still have enough voltage so you know you don't want to make it so the only way you're going to achieve your goal is on a full pack 84.4 volts so you gotta you gotta give yourself a little extra room and that's what I'm doing now like I said it's not needed I definitely can reach that and achieve that now but like I said if I'm not on a full battery it may be difficult so I want to take away that difficulty by uh, adding a little extra uh oh my bad I 
I turned up my uh, my off throttle regen which is why it's making a lot more power when I'm off the throttle but it's also putting more drag on my bike whereas though uh, I might have had a little more coasting ability you know I like I had it just right whereas though when I got off the throttle it was coasting and replenishing my battery uh, just enough whereas though I didn't feel any type of drag on my bike at all coasting but now I've uh, I turned it up to the point where when I get off the throttle now it, it actually uh, is reducing my speed just a little bit Which ain't that bad. I mean, it, it, it's really not that bad. But uh, where it wasn't noticeable before, it's definitely noticeable now. Turn my lights on. Jump out here on the road for just a little bit. Yeah, but uh, yeah, fellas. That's the beauty of electronics. There's no guessing. Now, fulfilling those uh, variables to those equations is difficult, you know. Uh, making a pack that's large enough to supply 450 amps is uh, no simple task. And uh, not only that, getting everything else in the system to uh, fit the equation also is uh, difficult, which is why I have to do impedance matching and stuff like that. Because I need to know what my motor and battery load is with the impedance is on everything even the controller so all that has to be measured and uh you know in order to uh put those variables into the uh little program that we have that does the calculations man i tell you uh back in the day we used to have to use scientific calculators and do all those calculations even though it was with a calculator it's still a long list of uh work that has to be done on that calculator but now with uh computers and programs man you can set up a program where as though all you got to do is input the variables like i say man and it's easy peasy as far as the computer doing those calculations man. Although I talk about Ohm's Law, that's just an easy series circuit, which uh, this stuff is never just an 
easy series circuit that combination circuits you have other factors like capacitance inductance and all that gain from transistors and uh, frequency a whole bunch of other uh, stuff that you have to add in there instead of just volts, amps and ohms so they get very complex really quickly you know these formulas like I said these, your motor has a certain hertz rating as far as the frequency that your motor is uh, producing duty cycles it's a lot it's deeper than what you think if it was just a, a simple Ohm's law formula with three variables that'd be a beautiful thing but it's not I think I'm going to finally bite the bullet and get me some really good suspension on this bike. You know, uh, these little K&M shocks and rear suspension wasn't too bad when I first got them. But you know, after time and after being a little on the heavy side, man, it, it, it loses its original compression and springiness that it had now i do know uh there's a valve on these forks where you can uh repressurize them and uh, i'm pretty sure i need to do that because they've gotten quite soft and mushy uh maybe i just need to uh readjust them because I'm sure that uh, these things don't hold the, the gas the, the pressure that they had initially I'm, I'm pretty sure of that and just like that spring on that rear suspension man uh, because when I uh, put my bike on the rack and I strap it down I compress the rear and the front with those straps and holding that spring compressed uh, it takes away from its uh springiness <laughs> i don't know if that's a word but yeah it damn sure ain't as springy as it used to be i was definitely going to add another one to the rear but then i was like man uh i'd have to buy it another new spring because uh 
like I said, this one is already stretched out a little bit, so it, they, it wouldn't be working evenly. You know what I mean? driving early today the car man I had two people that almost hit me in the car and they never even saw me man motorists do not be paying attention man and that makes it real scary for, for us out here I think I'll go this way not only that you got people texting and doing all kinds of stuff So, that's why, uh, man, you know, somebody has asked me about the 100 mile an hour thing. Like I say, man, I'm definitely uh, trying to film and do that on an actual track in a controlled environment. Because I take a chance every time I attempt to do that shit out here on the road or try to, you know, do it. I mean, uh, the stage that my bike is, is at now man this this bike definitely can do it and then some so it's no longer the issue of will my bike do it it's the question of will my balls allow it to be done and, uh, man i've been battling with that issue a little bit boy i'm telling you you get up around that high speed and you get to coming up on the curve or cars or whatever man like I say that shit is easier said than done it's one thing if you want a, a, a empty road by yourself and ain't nobody around for miles and miles and you fall you ain't gonna get ran over or get a double whammy but shit you, you try doing these things in track and not only that like I say you risk, you risk, when you're going super fast and crazy on the road, you risk losing your bike or getting into some type of altercation with the police, you know, because like I say, man, I'm not just stopping for the law. They're going to have to catch me. And who wants that? Who, I mean, that's not something I really want to do. But it's damn sure something I will do. That's another thing I'm noticing too, man. Uh, when I got this open face helmet on, it's not the same as far as going fast. You know, the speed feels a lot 
it just feels a lot faster with an open face helmet because you got that wind rushing in and uh not only that man that around 65 70 miles an hour it's hard to breathe just like you stick your head out of the car window but when i got on my full face helmet i feel a little braver because that's enclosed it's nice and quiet so it doesn't feel like i'm going as fast you know but when you got that wind rushing in and all that man it, that changes the game now just like back there i was only doing 60 but uh man that shit uh it was i noticed my, it was getting a little hard to breathe i don't know if that's because i'm sick and got a cold or what One of these days, I'm gonna stop being so damn lazy and put that damn kickstand on this bike. <laughs> I didn't want them because I wasn't even using them. I gotta put that other 220 on the back. I have another 220 for the back. Right now it's a 203 on there. And uh, I've been procrastinating about putting that on because, uh, shoot, to put that rotor on the back, I gotta disconnect my phase wires and all that, man. To put that rotor on, it's a lot of work. More than I care to do. Then I got an extra one that they messed around. Amazon messed up and sent me another one. So I got two more 220s. I was thinking about putting uh, dual, dual uh, rotors on the front. That's the only reason why I'm thinking about keeping that. And I mean, that ain't because I need it. That's just because it looks good. <laughs> and not only that, man, I see them guys doing them stoppies. Even though they're doing it with one rotor, I'm pretty sure that'd be a lot easier with two. But then again, two will probably make it a lot easier to accidentally hit them brakes and flip your ass off the front. I'm sure with two, two sets of uh, four piston Mogurus on the front, so you got eight pistons all together. I'm sure that that is overkill on the stopping power on the front of this bike. Let's see, we got anything else to talk about today? Not too much. Uh, tomorrow we are gonna juice up because it's kind of cool today. It's supposed to be warmer tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to juice up and do some draggy times. And uh, not only that, like I said, I got to set my bike up for doing draggies. So, yep. That will be the next uh, next video. We're gonna do some draggy times, even though I probably won't be showing that too much. Well, yeah, I will. It just won't be the exact figures. That's all. All right, y'all. Take it easy. Take care. Crisscross and wise deuces. We, we out. But it's chilly.
Peace.